Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and happy Wet Wednesday to you. I hope that everyone is having a great start to your day, no matter... Just I'll overlook the rain. It's okay. <laughs> um, you're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Quibi Lahardin, and I have a room full of very special ladies here with me today. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go around the table and give you their name, but they are going to actually tell you their title and what um, work that they do. They are from our local Health South Rehabilitation Hospital. Um, we have Mrs. Ashley Watson, Mrs. Chris Ashley. Ashley, Ms. Tonya Hathcock, okay, and Ms. Bethany Moss, and then we have a student with us, Ms. Robin Loudon. Um, she thinks she's not going to say much, but we're going we're gonna to get into the conversation too. <laughs> we're going to start with Ms. Ashley and go around the table, and if you all could please tell your title and what role you play at HealthSouth. Yes, my name is Ashley Watson. I've been a nurse with HealthSouth for over 11 years now. Okay. Um, I really focus on the community outreach programs that we do offer at HealthSouth. Okay. So from s support groups that we offer to educational events, I'm the person that helps to organize okay. those. Um, any given day, you never know what I'm going to be doing, <laughs> but um, I love what I do and th really believe in the programs that we are able to offer at HealthSouth. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank Ms. You. Chris? I'm Chris Ashley. I'm a physical therapist at HealthSouth. I've been there for 22 years. And I'm also a certified lymphedema therapist. My current title is Patient Assessment Standards Coordinator, so I help to make sure that our documentation is correct, that all of our information that goes in the patient's charts is correct, and that we're achieving the goals that we need to with our patients. All right. <coughs> Ms. Tonya? I'm Tonya Hathcock. I'm a physical therapy assistant. I've been with HealthSouth for 17 years. Um, my main focus at HealthSouth is APT work in the APT clinic and APT support group and also help Chris out doing the uh, patient assess assessments. Okay, well thank you. And Miss Bethany? <laughs> I'm Bethany Moss. I'm a physical therapist. I've been with HealthSouth for about six years, uh, about four years full-time. Okay. Um, my focus is our Parkinson's program. Okay. Um, and uh, I help out with the Parkinson's support group and um, we have a new uh, power up with Parkinson's that we do. Oh. It's a community exercise class that we'll be having. I definitely want to hear more about that. Um, definitely. And I feel like that the services you offer kind of go under recognized. Many people don't know what you offer and the value of the service. The value of the services. Um, I can attest to, you know, being a patient there. So I'm very grateful for, you know, I met Miss Chris and some other you know, lovely people. So you all do provide wonderful service. So let's get into these um, uh, support groups and different things that you offer. We're just going to go down the list. Uh, first is the amputee support group. Tell us when it meets, what it's about, um, what can individuals expect when they come to the group. Okay, our amputee support group meets every fourth Tuesday of the month at 12, around 12 p.m. because um, it meets right after we have our amputee clinic. So varying on how many patients that we're seeing in our amputee clinic um, right before that will vary on how many, what time we actually get started. Okay. But we too, do try to start around 12 o'clock. Um, we started this group back in April of 2012. I can't believe it's already been that many years. Wow. Um, we've grown from about 10 to about 30 to 40 on any given time. So it's wonderful because we actually see that these patients and these participants really needed to have that support system and right there and we're able to offer that. Um, and I'm gonna let Tanya tell you about okay. the MPT clinic. Okay, go ahead. Um, as well, the same, um, the fourth Tuesday of every month, we have MPT clinic. <laughs> it's a free service to the community. Um, we have Dr. Ball um, there along with JPNO and they assess the patients as they come in and try to determine what their needs are. Okay. Um, and then um, just, we just, it kind of keeps um, everybody in check, make sure they're progressing, doing well. Um, if they're a new amputee, um, it's an easy way to progress them quicker to okay. get in their prosthesis. Okay. And just Tanya McCare was just not there before that this program started. So a lot mm -hmm. of people were getting missed on what they actually needed. And so Dr. Ball was the one that said, this needs to be a part of our community. 
Um, so it's exciting. And she didn't mention that she's the physical therapist in that as well. So we have therapy portion in there because sometimes it doesn't mean that they have to be in the hospital for two or three weeks to okay. get what they need. It might be just a quick, simple little thing from Tanya saying, hey, try this, and then it works for them. So. Help us understand, you know, from the outside looking in, we just see an individual that gets a part of their limb or full limb removed. We have no clue. Those of us who have all of our limbs don't understand the magnitude of emotions and just the trauma and the psychological effects that they go through. So help us understand why these groups are so important and what are some things that these individuals deal with that makes this group, these these treatments clinic and the group support groups necessary? Well, I can, from the training and talking to patients, um, the loss of a limb, you pretty much go through all stages um, of grief as if you lost a loved one. Okay. You, you go through all those stages. So you get mad, you're sad, you're, you know, all of them. Um, along with the body image, a lot of our, um, Patients suffer with body image. They don't want to look in the mirror. They don't want to touch, you know, the leg. And um, it's really difficult. So the support group um, is there for them, the new ones. And then when they do get their prosthesis, maybe they have this idea they're just going to put it on and take off walking. Okay. And that's not always the case either. And so the support group, you get to see, along with the clinic as well, everybody at different stages so you can see hey I'm here but look at this person over here that's up and walking and they've had that prosthesis and that's going to be me and it gives them the hope and they can talk to the other other amputees and say yeah I struggled this this was my struggle I, I couldn't you know wear my prosthesis for very long at a time and I had a hard time getting up and moving and, and just the different things that everybody goes through because it's not an easy process do um, some of them ever report having that um, phantom feel that phantom sensations okay. and phantom pains? Yes, ma'am. Um, and those are definitely real. And a lot of people they have a hard time struggling with why am I having pain somewhere that is no longer there. Um, and it makes them feel kind of like they're they're you know am I am I crazy? Am I losing my mind? No. The nerves that went to the lower part of your leg or your knee or your ankle, the nerves are still there. They're still connected to your brain. So they're still sending impulses out, and that's where the phantom sensations come wow. from. And so I, I try to explain that to the patients so that they understand, yeah, I'm not crazy. I'm still getting those messages sent to my brain, and my brain is reacting even though my foot's no longer there. And that's where that support group really does okay. help too, because they can share those those different situations where, you know, one thing works for the other, but the other it may not work for that other patient. Right. Um, so they share, you know, this is what works for me. Try this, and um, and that's so wonderful about that little system having that support there. That's wonderful. So again, this is the amputee support group and the amputee clinic. They're both on the fourth Tuesday of the month. The support group starts at 12 p.m. This is at Health South um, Rehab Hospital. Yes. I keep want to say systems. Health South Rehab Hospital. Give us the address to that. And we'll just restate the address over and over throughout the show. Sure, it is 1201 Fleming Avenue, right off of Matthews. So basically you sit at the back of, well, yeah, we're off of like Osler this. Drive. Okay. We're off of Osler Drive. And if you um, want to get, be a part of that program, we can send you a mail out. Just give me a call um, at 870-351-5955. Or you can always email me as well. That's ashley.watson at healthsouth.com. And we can get you on that mailing list. Okay. So I'm going to actually put um, this information in our Facebook Live feed. And we actually... Um, have a shout out from Arlene, Arlinda, Arlinda Boyd. <laughs> she said, "Woohoo, hell <laughs> That's my mom. <laughs> oh, my mom. <laughs> she says, um, uh, "Woohoo, hell stop rehab team." Ashley, Tanya, Bethany, you rock. Oh, thank you so much for that. <laughs> thank you so much, and thank you to Miss Cora Evans Hester. For checking in the other people who I can't see that are checked that are checked. We have quite a few people watching, but I can't see who they are. So thank you all for checking in. Don't forget to leave your comments and questions and I will post Miss 
um, Ashley's information in our Facebook live feed. So if you want to write that down and get in touch with her. Okay, so next we have the stroke support group. Um, and stroke is one thing, you know, we hear a lot about it. I still don't think many people know as much as they should when it comes to recognizing how to recognize when someone's having a stroke or they're having a stroke. Absolutely. Um, so I want to little add a little bit to that stroke support group thing. Um, so for those folks that do want to have some education in regards to stroke awareness, I do offer stroke awareness classes. Um, I can go to your organization, um, go to your church, wherever you would like me to come and actually speak in regards to the signs and symptoms to be looking for, what to do if you do have a stroke, because that's just as important um, to know what to do if you do have a stroke. Yes. Um, so I, I, as far as the stroke support group goes though mm -hmm. um, we meet every second Thursday of the month at 1 p.m. Okay. Um, I cannot remember exactly how long that program's been apart but I can tell you at least 10 plus years so wow. it's been around <laughs> for some time definitely um, we have a core group that always are in attendance but then we have just some other folks that will um, maybe decide six years later after that stroke that they're ready to come to our support group um, and that's one of the things I really like is that we will keep you on that mailing list that we have um, because sometimes it takes a lot longer for that individual to be ready to be a part of a support system um, just where you are in the whole phase of where you are and the grieving of what's happened to you um, but yes strokes are very misunderstood and learning and understanding um, what to do if you have a stroke is so crucial and um, like I said I would love to provide that education to your organization or any church or whatever that would be needed do you feel that people, and this goes for all support groups, do you feel that some people don't come because they feel like, I don't need help, I'm fine. Like, Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with Absolutely. me. Absolutely. That is definitely one of, probably the number one reason. Mm -hmm. um, I don't need this. I, I'm different than that other okay. person. Um, but then once they actually come into the presence of our support group and say, oh, I am normal here. Okay. This is not, you know, I, I, this is my normal place. And I actually had someone mention that to me recently at one of my support groups. This is where I feel the most normal. Okay. And I feel good about myself. And I, I'm like, well, I'm so glad that we're able to provide that. You it's know, awesome. maybe it's only once a month, <laughs> but, um, but for you to feel that way, um, we can't beat that. <laughs> you cannot. No, do you, are caregivers welcome? To come? Absolutely. Okay. To all these support groups, caregivers are just as important to us to have them involved. Because um, I can remember when my mom had a stroke, and unfortunately, we lived in a rural area, so I didn't know about the resources that were available. Sure. And that's another thing for the individuals that do live in rural, rural um, areas on the outskirts of town. How do you reach them? Okay. Um, how I know that there's a lot of disparity when it comes to getting the medical care they need um, for anything. Um, some people in those areas, as we call the country, out in the, I you know, out I understand. <laughs> Well, um, that's where I'm actually, um, with what I get to do for Health South, I can go to that community okay. and actually speak with those different groups. Um, let them know about the support group that we do have here okay. in Jonesboro. Um, I've had it in the past where, you know, they're like, well, we need to start a support group here in our area. So I'm always happy to see what resources they have available for someone to actually get one started in their particular okay. area as well. Um, but as for, you know, our support group, we have people that drive two hours sometimes to get to oh, our support wow. group. Um, so, you know, know they're always welcome I know that transportation is sometimes an issue when it's two hours away one yes. way or the other um, but once they get plugged in they don't want to miss it they make okay. a trip to Jonesboro Arkansas just for support group day so. okay there's a new term that I've just become familiar with and it's telemedicine I think it's called telemedicine um, basically for people again in those rural um, areas or those in the outskirts of town um, maybe a clinic or facility was set up something to do um, basically uh, communication with the doctor via Skype or some other right. telecommunication uh, resource so do you see foresee that possibly happening or is that something in the work that you all may have talked about when it comes with health sound we ha I mean as far as I know there has not been any talk mm -hmm. about utilizing that okay. um, but I'm sure that we'd be open to, you know, we have to have somebody with some technology yes. savviness, okay? So I might come to you. Oh, no. I might come to you. Um, but no, I mean, we're always open, especially to 
for our support groups, I mean, why not have it where others can log in and see what we're discussing that particular day? And a lot of the telemedicine at this point is dealing with acute medical problems, okay. changes you're having to get a hold of a doctor quickly, okay. um, that it hasn't gotten into rehab where you're dealing with some of the things that you have to physically help the okay. patients with. Um, it may be something down in the future that we could do with the support groups as well um, to reach some of those rural communities and get some kind of feedback from them, but it's not something we've really looked into at this point. Okay. Well, hopefully somewhere down the line, um, I just hate for people to miss out, even if it's just talking to someone. Um, I'm very grateful that I'm in a support group on Facebook, and so we have the opportunity to really chat back and forth and send videos and pictures and whatnot. Um, there's also other options um, with the concerning lymphedema. There's a Arkansas state team. We get to email and communicate back and forth. So it really helps to have, for anyone suffering from any disease, it really helps to have other people that are close around you that you can communicate with. Uh, just someone you know that's going through the same thing. Absolutely. Okay. I agree. All right, so what, I want to get that phone number. Oh, it's right here. I'm trying to put this information into, again, the phone number to reach out to Ms. Ashley. Any these, um, do any of you ladies have other phone numbers that anybody can reach out to you? We could get, also just give you the main mm -hmm. number at Hell South, okay. um, and it's 870-932-0440. Okay, one more time. 870-932-0440. Okay. I'll make sure to put that information in. Thank you. All right, so um, the next item on the list, um, again, the Stroke Support Group meets every second Thursday of the month at 1 p.m. at Health South. So if you are a stroke patient, I don't want to say victim, um, someone that has suffered a stroke, caregiver, or someone who has suffered a stroke, please put this on your calendar and go out to these support groups. Um, you never know what information can be shared right. that could be helpful. And again, mailing list, same thing. Okay. Get in touch with me, okay? All right. The next one is the Parkinson Support Group. So tell us more about this group and the dates and times and the individuals. Okay. So the Parkinson Support Group, we meet every second Tuesday okay. um, of every month at 1 o'clock. Um, still in the lower lobby of Hell South, just like the other ones. Um, this is for any patients whether they're newly diagnosed seeking information or maybe you've had it for several years um, for caregivers for loved ones for any family members wanting that education um, uh, we do a lot of family education we do patient education um, the reason I kind of wanted to start this support group is um, these patients that I was seeing upstairs and inpatient they had no idea what this disease was um, they didn't know what to expect, the progression, um, no one was really talking about it. Um, they go to the doctor, they get the diagnosis, and then what? So with the support group, we're able to provide that education and say, hey, you know, this is how it is. There is a progression. It is degenerative. Okay. Um, but there's some things that you can do with it. You know, and as far as caregiver support, um, we do exercise classes. We okay. do fun things. Um, so... But yeah, every second Tuesday of the month at 1 p.m. And I don't think, and I'm, I'm, I'm just going to speak for myself. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we I've heard about Parkinson's, but again, you see snippets on TV and they give you just a short view of what the disease is. Mm -hmm. um, most people think, okay, it's just, um, it causes tremors or... I know I personally knew that it was a degenerative disease, but I still don't know the ins, outs, you know, the beginning stages to, you know, long term, how it affects someone. So I really feel like people do need to go out uh, to these groups, even and especially patients, because I can imagine there's so many emotions that they're dealing with. Um, some of the videos that I've seen, the patients are so frustrated because their quality of life has changed and it's like I don't even know what to do anymore like you know where's my what what type of life do I have now yes <laughs> so um, we're gonna get ready for a quick break I don't want to run out of time discussing this so when we come back we'll talk a little bit more about Parkinson's and the exercise programs that you offer you tuned into community conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM we have another Facebook shout out though um, see 
Miss Arlinda says, Chris Ashley, this gal is a total package in rehabilitation. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Arlinda. <laughs> so she's a resident mom. <laughs> she used to work at Hell South. Okay. So she, she knows a little bit. <laughs> but she knows all of you all, yeah. the whole ins and outs of everything. All righty. So we just want to say thank you to everybody who is checking in on our live stream. We're going to get ready for a quick break. But please do not go anywhere. And we'll be right back after these messages. Listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Are you feeling parent pressure? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. No, not peer pressure, parent pressure. You know, pressure to allow your child to do things that other parents are letting their kids do. Watch movies, listen to music, and wear clothes that are inappropriate for your child. The right decision for your child is usually the road not taken by many. It's sometimes a hard and lonely road for a parent, but one that is more likely to lead to a good life for your child. So make a destination choice for your child, not the one that will win your child's friendship, but the one that will take your child where you want them to go. Remember, your family first. Want to connect with Mark on Twitter? You can. Follow him at twitter.com slash Mark Merrill. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K-N-O-M-E-G-A-1908. Com. Check out the Dorinda Clark Cole Radio Show every Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. Listen as Dorinda plays the very best in contemporary gospel music and interviews all of your favorite gospel artists. The Dorinda Clark Cole Radio Show every Sunday at 4 p.m. on KLEK 102.5 FM. Did you know KLEK has a brand new streaming app? That's right, you can listen to KLEK 102.5 FM anywhere in the world. The app is available for all Android phones and tablets, as well as iPhones and iPads. Just search your app store for KLEK and download the KLEK app for free today. And don't miss a beat of the education, entertainment, and empowerment on KLEK 102.5 FM. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Kobila Hart, and my special guests today are Mrs. Ashley Watson, Mrs. Chris Ashley, Ms. Tanya Hathcock, Ms. Bethany Moss, and we have a student by... Um, sorry, we have a student, Miss Robin Loudon. So thank you all so much. Uh, the first part of the show, uh, we talked about the amputee support group, the amputee clinic, which is every fourth Tuesday. The clinic is pretty much all day. What is it? What it's, time does the clinic start? It's from 9 to about 11.30, 11.45. Okay, then the support group starts at 12. And then we talked about the stroke support group, which meets every second Thursday of the month at 1 p.m. at Health South. And we talked about the Parkinson support group, which meets every second Tuesday about 1 p.m. at Health South. But we're going to talk about some more information concerning Parkinson's and some of the exercise classes that are offered. Um, yes, this disease is well known, but... Again, I don't think it's talked about enough to the point where people fully understand the impact it has on someone's life. So go ahead. So I'm actually certified in two different types of 
Parkinson treatment. Okay. So one of those is LSVT Big, um, and the other is called Power or Parkinson Wellness Recovery. Okay. Um, is the course that I went to, um, and both of those show extensive research on how to. Um, kind of change the brain and oh. to help fight this disease that there are specific exercises and tasks they can do on a daily basis that can actually help to slow the progression of the disease oh. so it's pretty amazing how the, our brain works and how just simple exercises and things like that can help okay. with those things um, you know insight. yes so um we actually do um the power moves they're called power moves. Okay. Um, uh, we actually have a class that meets um, the first Saturday of every okay. month um, at nine o'clock. Again, downstairs at the um, at Hell South, um, where we actually go through those entire exercises. Um, you do have to be able to sit or stand okay. on your own. Um, so we um, our very first one was February. So our next okay. one will be what is that? The third. Oh, March so this 3rd. Is a brand new place. This one is brand new. Okay. Yes, we are very excited to have that as a community outreach okay. um, to allow people to come in and do these exercises. You know, maybe they are not ready to come inpatient or outpatient. Um, maybe they still are very high functioning, okay. but they want to keep that um, disease at bay, keep it from progressing, and okay. continue those exercises. So, so through um, your program or through the exercises, and other op um, options that are available. Have you seen people live, and I hate to use the word normal, I really hate that word, um, semi-normal, for, for lack of a better word, normal. Mm -hmm. Do you see people living a normal life um, more? Yes. Where they're able to, even if they're not able to work, they're still able to care for themselves without, say, a home health nurse coming in. Yes. Or, Yes, so a lot of our patients that have done our inpatient and maybe gone to outpatient therapy um, at Health South, because um, we have uh, we have therapists that are certified in the power inpatient and outpatient as well, um, and so they complete those programs. You know, we're providing a lot of education in the meantime. Okay. Um, and so during that time, they're learning those exercises, the different things that they can do that can make their normal everyday life a little bit easier okay. you know different um even if they have challenges at home you know working on those things working on the things that would maybe they would need assistance okay. at home but keeping them up to um just guiding them through giving them uh tricks and different okay. things that they can do to help that i want to go back as you were talking I had a thought come to mind um, as with any of these support groups or anything that you offer at the uh, hospital do you incorporate the children of these families um, I was just thinking back to when I was dealing with my early diagnosis of lymphedema and then other friends that I have that have had breast cancer or anything else they have children that are going through this with them as well. So when my mom had her stroke, I was 14. I was clueless. So do you incorporate the children? The children are more than welcome to be okay. a part of the support group. Um, in particular, right now, I'm thinking of an individual that comes to the stroke support group for sure that okay. she brings her children. Now, they're younger. Um, so, you know, if they're school age, they're probably going to be in school. Okay. Um, but during the summer, they'll have children that attend. I know even in the amputee support group, there's been many children that have actually come to that one as well. And we just include them, make them feel just as happy to be there. And they love coming there, actually. Okay. They love that one day a month they get to <laughs> come to support group with mom dad grandparents um, to be a part of that do you foresee at some point even if not through your agency um, support groups or seminars or things centered strictly around talking to children because they understand I know we don't give children as much credit as they deserve they understand a lot more than we think at the same time certain words and phrases they don't quite comprehend the way we as adults do so do you foresee somewhere down the line? And hopefully someone listening is inspired <laughs> to Absolutely. put together yes. some type of youth centered, uh, child centered, I was a child, adolescent youth centered um, groups that speak to them on their level. Up to this point, I do not believe we've actually had a program set specifically for children. Okay. Um, you know, I'm thinking about other organizations, maybe here in Jonesboro, that we could like 
get together okay. and actually work together to help with that. Um, I'm not sure where we would go with that at well, Health South here in Jonesboro right now. Well, maybe um, we have a connection with Arkansas State, so maybe someone that's in early childhood education, sure. social work, mm -hmm. and then between the different physical, occupational therapy and the nursing. Like I feel that they could collaborate and come I up with something. I believe you are <laughs> very correct. I think it would be wonderful. Um, you mentioned your mother having a stroke. Mm -hmm. I, my father had many strokes, and so. I'm, you know, I understand as a kid, and I wasn't a kid when my dad first had his stroke, but you're always their child. Yes. <laughs> and so no matter what, you do need that help too, just as well. Um, so it's very, I mean, I, I like the idea of what you're going at with it for sure. So right, so anyone from Arkansas State listening, I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I love to see collaborations. I love to see networks come together. I love to see people. I care about this community so much. I love to see people come together and do things to help uplift and increase the quality of life of everybody. Everyone deserves to live the best life possible. I agree. <laughs> I know you mentioned earlier talking about that normal term. <laughs> you know, in all the programs that we offer at Health South, whether it's inpatient, outpatient, that's our goal is to help these folks adapt to whatever's happened to them, whether it be that amputation, whether they've had a new stroke, whether or not it's a brain injury, but help them to adapt so they can have that more you know, quote unquote, normal life, you know, so, um, you know, and that's what we see. Um, so, you know, everybody has different goals. Sometimes those goals are for that grandparent to be able to go to that football game. Okay. Okay. So we're going to make sure that they can get to that football game that their grandson is playing in. And, or they want to cook okay. so that's their passion let's let them teach them to how to adapt to how to cook to what's going on with them right now so they can have that normal normalcy to their life yeah but they can't whatever see me doing that on the right whatever their new normal is right right the new normal exactly all righty so there's another group is called tbi support group and this is coming in march so tell us about this Yes, I'm very excited to start this. So TBI, that stands for Traumatic Brain Injury. Oh. Um, and also not necessarily just traumatic brain injuries, but brain injuries. Um, patients, um, caregivers are welcome to participate in this program as well. Uh, probably about six months ago, I had an individual contact me and said, What's the, what, what support group do you have for me here at, um, at Health South? And I was like, well, we have our stroke support group. You're more than welcome to attend. Um, but after really talking with that individual, that's not what they needed. Okay. They needed their own support group. Um, so my gracious leaders over at Health South said, go for it. So we're going for it. And um, I have probably about 50 on my mailing list right now. So I can add quite a few more to that okay. for sure. I'll, I mean, my stroke support group, I mail out probably 400 a oh, month, no. yes, so <laughs> that might be a little bit more, but I mean, um, but no, um, so excited to be able to offer this in our, our area. Okay. Um, the individual that really called and said I needed this, um, her husband was in a really bad car accident and they had to go off, you know, to another city for his type of rehab initially. Well, they're back in Jonesboro now. So what does Jonesboro have to offer? Okay. You know, Health South has our brain, in, we have a brain injury rehab. We can work with brain injury patients. And a lot of times people forget that we're here. Um, because after those traumatic brain injuries, a lot of times they go to Memphis for oh. acute care. And so they kind of go to other areas maybe um, in bigger cities. But we can actually take care of the brain injury patients. But oh, I'm, I mean, I'm really excited about this new support group. So it actually starts next month, March the 20th. Okay. It'll be our first time to meet. Um, so it's on a Tuesday and it will be at 3 p.m. Um, you know, obviously the, this first meeting is gonna be a time for us to figure out what they need. Okay. Um, you know, what time works for them. So it may change as we go through this because I want to make sure we're meeting their needs. Okay. Now, um do you reach out to all of the hospitals to help keep the doctors aware of the program with all of your support groups? With every single one of them. That's what, um, you know, I said I was community outreach. That's one of my things okay. is I do lots of marketing <laughs> too. Um, I will go everywhere and I mean okay. all over the, I mean, not just in Jonesboro, all the other communities oh, okay. as well um, to make sure that they understand that we have these particular groups as well. Maybe they haven't been a patient of ours and that's okay because they're a part of this okay. and they can be a part of this community right here. So. All right. Now one thing I want to ask, I learned this um, by way of doing some research, Health South is nationwide. Um, like 
it's everywhere. It is. It <laughs> so is. do you all keep in communication? Like if there's another clinic, say in another state, they're doing something, they share what they're doing with you, you share what you're doing with them and maybe try to incorporate, if it's something that works for you, like, okay, I might want to try that or do you all share information and communicate and socialize, network <laughs> with other facilities? We do. Um, actually, not that long ago, I went to a, a educational um, event they had in Memphis okay. out at their Health South. Um, so we're always aware of the different programs that are being offered. Um, I know not. I mean, it's been a few years now, I guess, since Joint Commission was there and was looking over our programs. And um, and actually, one on our MPT program, she said other facilities need to be looking at your program this works so you know we need to share that so you know they're welcome to reach out to us anytime to see you know what really works for patients because at the end of the day it's all about making sure those patients get what they need yes, no matter where you are we want you to, I mean so if you're in another state oh, please do it the okay. way we're doing it because it really works <laughs> <laughs> so if you all don't mind I would like the miss um, Robin to come to the mic just to kind of share her experience being a student maybe you can draw some other students um, other students to the program to the facility and you know and just tell us what you're studying and you know what you're doing what you plan to do in your career so I graduate from Harding in May okay um, I have been every two months in a different state on a different rotation oh my god <laughs> so I've seen a lot um, I was in Colorado at one point and my focus of interest with neuro rehab has been Parkinson's which has okay. been cool because I've been with Bethany this rotation All right. and I'm also certified in LSVT big which is a Parkinson's treatment okay and I have seen families come together in Colorado for these types of support groups and in Jonesboro and it's really neat because I'm realizing oftentimes medical professionals are pressed for time to educate family members and patients on okay you're diagnosed with this disease here's some medicine I'll see you for a check oh in a couple God. months yes ma'am <laughs> <laughs> and then we get them and I'm realizing more and more, a lot of the times the family's frustrated. And for example, with Parkinson's, I cannot get my husband to sit up straight. He won't do it. And they don't realize there's this postural instability that goes along with Parkinson's or the tremors or the shuffling gait okay. and slow movements. And in that patient's mind, they think they're moving completely normal. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes it's been really neat to watch how families will find that support group and communicate with each other and give each other encouragement and I've seen families be like okay I was there three days after my diagnosis and here I am a couple months into this support group and I've learned this this and this and these tricks and it's a unique disease to everybody but they also have a lot of the same um, maybe like encounters like freezing in a doorway okay. and so that's been cool to watch everybody collaborate and then it gives us as therapists ideas to help other patients when we see them in the hospital excuse me and um, I think that's like been the coolest thing to watch from state to state is seeing how the support groups really give the family more information to not be so dependent on everybody but to get more on top of their diagnosis and then I mean no one wants to feel alone and that question of am I normal is so yes. common with every <laughs> diagnosis so that's been really neat to watch with the support group and then since they've introduced the power moves classes that's been cool too because I think everybody's looking for this instant fix with what pill do I take and it's more than that and we're kind of <laughs> empowering them to take ownership of their diagnosis. Okay, That is awesome. I think um, I'm really grateful for this information that you all have provided and then these support groups. I think that I really pray that everyone that comes out um, really takes full advantage of everything you have to offer and start to internalize the whole process and, you know, kind of say to themselves, okay, I can, I will, you know, whatever po positive talks they need to give themselves to keep pushing. Um, everyone, even people who have all their limbs, maybe have no diseases, they still have to push themselves, give themselves positive talks every now and then. So I can't even imagine what it's like for these individuals going through these different things. Um, 
they have to find some strength from deeper within to keep pushing and keep going. Um, okay, so let's get into you. You all do so much more though than this. So you have so many other things. So what are some other uh, community education classes that you have going on throughout the year? Well, as you know very well, yes. <laughs> March 6th is National Lymphedema Awareness Day. And we do have lymphedema patients. We see both inpatient and outpatient. But this year, because you've asked for it, we are offering a, an education class on March 6th. It'll be at Health South. Um, just for education for staff and community regarding what lymphedema is, how to treat it. We're having several people that are living with lymphedema give some experiences, and we can talk about some of those things and how it affects your life. Um, and again, that'll be March 6th at 12 p.m. Um, if you are interested in attending, you can contact Ashley Watson at 870-351-5955. Um, but, you know, it's just trying to get information out to the community. When people ask for things, we try and do the best we can. We've done education on every one of our programs. Um, but lymphedema is something that people are not real aware of unless they've experienced it or have someone experience it. It's like Parkinson's. It's something you want the quick fix and it's not there. It's a <laughs> lifelong process. <laughs> it's something you have to learn to live with and deal with and you're dealing with the same frustrations as other patients with changes in body image and, and how it's affecting your life and you can't always do things you want when you want and, and how to deal with a lot of those things. So, so yeah. hopefully we're going to start meeting some of that need with this education as well. I really hope so. Um, I just would love to see the medical community as a whole um, offer more services, not just for lymphedema, but Jonesboro is growing by leaps and bounds. And I know that St. Bernard's is doing a wonderful job in increasing um, their services and adding more specialists to their roster. NEA with the new hospital, they have a lot of specialists and a lot of uh, services, but there's still room for growth. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just love to see when I know, again, it, it takes money to draw people here. It takes, I'm not a statistician, I don't do statistics, but <laughs> I do know that it takes numbers as well. Um, not many doctors want to come to a place where there's only a handful of patients versus going to an area where there's an abundance of patients that they can serve. Um, but I would love to see more specialists come to this area. Mm -hmm to treat our patient, treat people, sorry, um, so they don't have to go to Memphis or Little Rock or Texas or Oklahoma or, you know, wherever else the specialists are. So. I say that all the time when I'm out <laughs> in the community. We are so fortunate in Northeast Arkansas to have all the services that you really do need okay. right here at home. You don't have to cross the river to go get this or that or the other. You can do it right here. And who wants to have to be away from home? I mean, really, when it comes down to it, everybody wants to be home. So. Let's stay home. Yeah. <laughs> Let's stay in our home area. I know, uh, just speaking for myself, I've had to visit uh, doctors in Tennessee simply due to there wasn't one here. Um, unfortunately, there were still some of the things that needed to be done, so I was unable to get the full treatment from them. But still, I would love to see more here because travel can be an issue. Like you mentioned earlier, for people who live in rural areas, yes, there are some, some travel options available. Um, NEA Transit through Crowley's Ridge. It's through Crowley's Ridge. They have a transportation service. However, it is you have to pay for it. So that could be an issue for some people. So one day there will be some full line of services available to people who need it um, that's at an affordable rate. So with that being said, I'm going to go up my soapbox and we're going to go to break. <laughs> um, you're tuned into Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Please don't go anywhere. We want to thank everybody out there watching the live stream. Please leave us a message. Tell us who you are. I can't see who you are. So <laughs> tell us who you are. Give us some words of, give us some words of encouragement. So. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 <laughs> FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. Money issues have long been cited as the most common characteristic of failed marriages and other relationships. But it does not have to be that way. Black Enterprise Senior Personal Finance Editor Stacey Tisdale offers the following advice for couples who want to overcome and avoid differences when it comes to managing their money. 
set long and short-term goals as a couple. Stay connected to your goals by having a monthly money date. Attach a positive activity to it, like dinner, and be sure to talk about your goals and dreams, not just your problems. Figure out how to build on each other's strengths. Note, do not have this meeting at the beginning or end of the month, as things tend to be tense near bill paying time. I'm out of time, but tune in for Money Matters tomorrow for more tips to keep you and your mate from being divided over money issues. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization dedicated to uncompromising commitment to communities. Service, leadership, empowerment. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. KLK 102.5 FM is giving away free gas in February. That's right, KLK has teamed up with Mrs. Polly's Motivational Barbecue CAB, 2098 South Caraway Road in Jonesboro in the Teletech parking lot and the Lambda Ada chapter of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated to give you free gas. All you got to do is tune in to All Gospel Wednesday with Brother Cobbs every Wednesday in February from 11 o'clock a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. When Brother Cobbs asks for the 10th caller, all you got to do is call in and say, Your life, your music, KLEK. Call in to 870-277-1080. Again, that's 870-277-1080. And you will win a $30 gift card good at any come-and-go gas station. KLEK. Giving away free gas every Wednesday for All Gospel Wednesday in February. And remember, your life, your music, KLEK. KLEK, Mrs. Polly's, and Phi Beta Sigma, we do it for you. KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268 or online at lscihelp.com. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was established on January 1, 1977, originally serving Blytheville, Arkansas, and now serving Jonesboro, Blytheville, Osceola, Marion, and West Memphis, Arkansas. Today, the chapter continues to make an impact by focusing on Alpha's national community outreach initiatives such as My Brother's Keeper, A Voteless People is a Hopeless People, Go to High School, Go to College, Project Alpha, Boy Scouts, and the March of Dimes. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is committed to Alpha mission of developing leaders, promoting brotherhood and academic excellence, while providing service and advocacy to the community. More information about the Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is available at MOL Alphas on Facebook or via email at molalphas at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Officer Jonathan Hagens of the Jonesboro Police Department. One of the best decisions I ever made was to join the Jonesboro Police Department. Since joining, I've had the pleasure to give back, protect, and serve my community. Now I want to let you know about that same opportunity. The Jonesboro Police Department will conduct testing for the patrol officers at the Valley View High School. Applications are available online at jonesboropolice.com. The Jonesboro Police Department offers a competitive salary, health and retirement benefits, top of the line training, and most importantly, the chance to make a difference in the Jonesboro community. Join me in making Jonesboro a better place the Jonesboro Police Department is an equal opportunity employer, and women and minorities are especially encouraged to apply. More information, 870-935-5657. Applications are being accepted. Applications are available at jonesboropolice.com. The Epic Center, located at 1899 Hasbrook Road, County Road 333, is Jonesboro's newest venue for entertainment for the entire family. They offer an auditorium with theater-style seating for up to 1,100 guests, a large stage, professional lighting and sound, dressing rooms, concessions, and more. Available for weddings, concerts, pageants, birthday parties, showers, and more. Booking and other information is available at Epic Center Jonesboro on Facebook, epiccenterjonesboro.com, and at 870-530-5841. 
And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Oh, all right. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Sorry, I got caught up in our off the air conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, you just have to be here. <laughs> all right, so we're going to do some wrap up on information that we shared. And Miss Tonya brought up a really great point. We, um, I brought up the idea of telemedicine earlier. And she just made a really great point um, how it would be a great idea, you know, down the road to do either some live streaming or different things because you said some people don't want to come out of their home. Right. Uh, you know, especially amputations sometimes um, it's raining and, and it takes so much effort to get out into the rain to go somewhere. So if we could have possibly a Facebook Live, uh, kind of like the show is, and um, they can connect with, with support group that way. and, and people there at support group can encourage them maybe to come out more. Maybe you've got somebody that doesn't want yes. to get out into the community. Um, they're ashamed, Just I guess is a up. word to, yes. to say. They're ashamed. They're not ready to face public and, mm -hmm. and they're suffering from that body image. Yes, um, maybe, you know, being on Facebook Live and having the people there talking to them would make them want to get out and come. And, you yes. know, I need to go uh, meet these people in person and, you know, just to support the, the camaraderie that they have there is great. Yeah, and even, you know, if they, you know, like the Facebook Live where they can have those comments and maybe asking questions, questions. and, you know, maybe having a patient that is there at support group to yeah. answer that question and make them realize, oh, that's the same thing that I'm going through or, you know, like he's kind of moving like I am, <laughs> yeah. you know, with like the Parkinson's for the tremors and the, you know, different things like that or the caregiver support and anything. Well, just to know, too, that they're not alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah. They're not alone. One that's thing I want to ask, um, do you recognize in your support groups that uh, once people get more acclimated to the program and the different individuals that come, do they start to find some humor back into their life? They, there are things that they can laugh about because they're dealing with it at the same time. Oh yes, <laughs> definitely. Well, I mean, if somebody could be walking through like we're in our support group and they're like, "What is going on?" Everybody's rolling, laughing. I mean, and the humor. <laughs> It's amazing, actually. Awesome. <laughs> yes. So, obviously, your support groups are really helping these individuals because now they're starting to peel back those layers of sadness and depression and anger and whatever other negative emotions may have shrouded them. They're now starting to, okay, I can, I see, a, you know, some light. <laughs> I'm starting to feel a little better and start to process this. Well, and the support groups make a big difference because being clinical we can give you the medical reasons of what's going on we can give you things that you should be doing and exercises but to have that person who's gone through that same experience and knows wow. some of the problems you're dealing with and can tell you hey I had that problem and this is how I fixed it okay. or this is what I did to get that one-on-one -on -one with another person that's been through an amputation or has Parkinson's or had a stroke makes a big difference you know, with how they, they are able to respond and how they feel about wow. themselves. That yeah. life can go on. That's right. You can, <laughs> you can still, you can go on. That is wonderful. Now for the people, um, I know I keep going back to the amputee program, um, support group, but for those that say are missing, you know, hand, arm, um, do you offer or do you help them find resources? If they can't wear, um, prosthetic uh -huh. help them find resources saying they need to reach grab like tool implement. yes um, I'm sorry yes um, actually we <laughs> have uh, upper extremity amputations that come to our clinic as well okay. so it's not just lower extremities that we will help you with upper extremities as well okay. we don't see as many okay um, but the majority are lower extremity but oh yes if they have a need and needs something I mean we'll get with our other she mentioned JPNO earlier that comes okay. to clinic and they can help with get whatever type of device that they do need to help them JPNO okay that's Jonesboro Prosthetic and Company okay. so all right so and with the stroke support group um, because I've personally seen the effects of stroke um, do you help caregivers understand or try to be a little more patient with the individual because their mind, from my experience, my mother, her mind was a little, 
I had to say turn upside down. Right, um, right. She would put her clothes on inside out. She didn't know how to comb her hair anymore. There were just certain little things that she once could do, she couldn't. And I found myself as a teenager being really frustrated. frustrated. So I can imagine. Yes. Because you see your loved one go from one state to a totally different uh -huh. state. And you're Definitely. Like, well, yes, um, we have all kinds of educational materials that we can actually give you. We have okay. books, but not only that, we can talk about it. Okay. Let's talk about it. What are you dealing with? What are you seeing? You know, and one of the books that I'm actually thinking about that we will utilize all the time, it talks about, you know, okay, this part of the brain has been affected. So okay. this is why this is happening. This is why they have no control maybe over their bowel and bladder because they can't help it. That part of the brain is, you know, been damaged. Um, but, you know, talking about the stroke and the brain injury, Tom does heal. Okay. Tom does heal, too. So just because I start out with one state of not being able to do this doesn't mean that, you know, a year, two, maybe even five years down the road, okay. they're going to regain what they didn't have. So, All right. Or what they lost. All right. So, again, we're talking to Miss Ashley Watson, Chris Ashley, Tonya Hathcock, Bethany Moss, and Miss Robin Loudon. Um, they're here from Health South Rehabilitation Hospital, and we have gone through the various support groups that they're offering, and then there are more to come. Come, so just stay tuned. They have an amputee support group, stroke support group, Parkinson's support group. Um, they offer power moves, exercise moves, exercise class, and then coming in March is the traumatic brain injury support group. So stay tuned for that. Uh, you don't want to miss it. Get on the mailing list. Get signed up. Yes. Um, I have put all the information in our Facebook live stream, but I'll make sure it is also posted on. Uh, Kayla Kay's Facebook and Instagram. Do you all have an Instagram? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to get y'all a couple. Of teach us, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna get y'all a couple of teenagers or college uh, students yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that love to do social media and take over that aspect. So, in the last minute and a half, do you have any final shout outs? Any final? You know, words? If anybody, <laughs> I would, I'd like to say because we talked about normal. Um. I always like to tell our, our patients, we're going to help you find that new normal okay. for you. That new normal. Because right. it might not be the way it used to be, but, you know, to, to make them feel better and think, okay, this is going to be my everyday life and not maybe be in sorrow or sad about how it used to be. But your new normal is, is going to be just as great as the old one. All right. Anybody else? We have like 49 seconds. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for allowing okay. us to be here with you today. Okay. I've enjoyed this. and. Maybe we do this more often. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah. That's what we're here for. We're a community radio station trying to provide information to the community that they might, ha might not have known. Right. All right. Anybody else? 30 seconds? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we thank you, ladies, so very much for coming. And don't forget to check out these different support groups. Now, I do want to ask, do you have a Facebook page for Health Sound? Or is this information on your website? We do not right now, but I think that's something that we've kind of discussed. That maybe <laughs> we, think we, we need, need one now. So. Yeah. All right, so watch out for Health South getting um, social network savvy in a few months. <laughs> all right, so we thank you all for tuning in to Community Conversations. You all have a very blessed day. It's wet outside, but stay dry. Have thank a you good for day. listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or